Hi there, hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're going to do a few really interesting experiments and observations and tests in relation to the accelerometers in smartphones and also in relation to gravity and whether it actually exists and if it does, what kind of force gravity is. We'll also see if we can measure gravity and we will see that if we can make a correlation between other kinds of forces and gravity, if it actually does exist. So let's get right on with the experiments and measurements. So the very first thing we're going to look at is a couple of apps on this smartphone. The first one is this one here called Excel Meter, which is a free download. So you can download that yourself and experiment with it. And I'll just open it up and show you what it actually does. So this app actually uses the accelerometers in the smartphone to measure the accelerative force that they are experiencing in real time, which it displays it here next to my thumb. It says uh, pretty much 1G. If I hold still enough, it'll, it'll actually say 1 exactly, but because I keep moving slightly, it's picking up slight accelerations in different directions and actually displaying that on the screen. In addition to the 1G that it's experiencing in, for whatever reason, is a straight down direction. So the arrow there indicates the direction in which it is experiencing that accelerative force. So the, this accelerative force of 1G, for whatever reason, is seems to be pulling the phone straight down. Now, one could only deduce that this is gravity. And before you go roasting me about uh, gyroscopes and things, there's actually a setting in here where you can use uh, the internal gyroscope to determine that, and it actually locks the G meter on 1G. So the very next app I want to have a look at is this G-Force meter here, and I believe it's a free download also, so you can tinker with it. Now what this one does is actually measure lateral acceleration when the phone is laying flat. It doesn't measure acceleration up and down through the screen, but if you tip the phone over, you'll actually be able to measure that lateral acceleration. So we'll open that up, and we'll have a look at it. And I've actually got the GPS turned off on this. But if you look down the bottom here, it will measure the G's. Now we're laying almost flat, so it's saying zero G's. But if I tip the phone up, you will see that it will approach one G. And you'll see the little ball drop there from the center, which there it's about in the center, to downwards. Here. And if you look on the bottom there, it's like 0 0.97, 96. It's actually topped out at, at 1.08 because I've been holding the phone fairly steady. But if I actually go like that, you'll see that the top measurement is now 3Gs. So it's just interesting that we can combine the effect of the accelerative force of me like jarring the phone down like this in a in a motion and gravity itself so as you can see as we move it up and down it actually changes so this should be interesting I, I want to do some more experiments with this and I'll show you what I'm actually going to do So just in case, if at this point you're not 100% convinced by what you're seeing with the uh, accelerometer type apps on the smartphone, and I understand if you aren't convinced by that because, you know, you've really got to take a black box approach to smartphones. They're very technical. Not everybody understands what goes on inside them. And there could be, you know, some sort of sleight of hand or skullduggery going on behind the scenes in the phone somewhere that you know that we don't really 
understand. So what I've done is I've formulated an experiment that uses a set of scales and we're going to simulate the effect of an accelerometer with the scales. It's not going to be accurate as such as far as the actual the the figures we're not going to get an actual measurable exact figure out but what we're going to get is something that's going to indicate uh, the direction in which this accelerative force called gravity is pulling on the scales so what I'll do is I'll pick the scales up and you should have on the screen the display of the actual scales and if I hold it still it should zero itself there we go it's zero so as I tip it you'll see numbers changing on the screen and you should have that on on your screen up in the corner and now I'm going to actually invert the scales and see what happens So I'm inverting the scales. Now we'll tip the scales back over. So we should have some interesting numbers there and there is a minus on that. So this is pretty much what is happening on the accelerometer in the phone. So at this point we have determined that a smartphone has accelerometers inside that can measure the accelerative force at which they're undergoing at any given moment and display that figure on the screen. Those very same accelerometers can also give us an indication on which direction that accelerative force is acting. And it seems that under most circumstances that accelerative force is acting in a downward direction and it's approximately 1G. Similarly, with the scale, when we had the bracket, the phone actually attached to the weighing plate on the scale, and we inverted the scale, the mass of the weighing plate, the phone and the bracket, are attracted by that accelerative force that is in a downward direction, and they cause a negative figure to be displayed on the scale. So that accelerative force could only ever be known as gravity. And without that accelerative force, the scales wouldn't work. They wouldn't display the mass of anything. Similarly, buoyancy would be impossible without an accelerative force. Now, buoyancy in some respects occurs without gravity, yes. It, it's, but it still has to occur with an accelerative force. It might be the accelerative force of gravity. It could be centrifugal accelerative force, angular momentum, like in a centrifuge. In a centrifuge that you'll find in many industries where they spin things at incredible speeds and create an accelerative force within the capsules in the centrifuge, they separate things out according to buoyancy with the lighter things or the lighter fractions or the lighter materials going to the top or the inside of the centrifuge and the heavier things going to the outside of the centrifuge. That is a form of buoyancy acting within a centrifuge. 
So to say that buoyancy is the thing that we're seeing and not gravity is actually not the truth. Buoyancy cannot occur without an accelerative force. And if pressed, I will show that sometime in the future. So I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Leave your comments and questions in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Have a great day.